Hi, and welcome back to our chemistry flipped classroom. And today we are jumping into stoichiometry. So we've been building towards stoichiometry um, as we go through this unit, and now we're ready to really complete all of the steps. So before we do that, let's talk about what stoichiometry is. So stoichiometry is really just the study of the quantities of materials that are either consumed or produced in a chemical reaction, which is just a way of saying that we're looking at um, masses or volumes of reactants and products that are involved in a reaction. So knowing that, let's review our uh, problem solving steps and then let's jump into some stoichiometry. So our problem solving steps, uh, we've gone over these before, but just a quick reminder. So we're gonna use the guess method. First thing we're always gonna do is identify the given. So what do we know? What does the problem give us? And then you, we're gonna identify the unknown. We're gonna figure out what we're being asked to find. For E, we're gonna determine what equations or conversion factors we'll need. And since this is stoichiometry, it's gonna be almost all conversion factors. S, we're gonna set up our problem, showing our work, including our units. And for our second S, we're gonna solve the problem, making sure that we check our significant figures. So we're gonna solve problems like this. And before we can actually start with the math piece, we're just gonna have a quick reminder of chemical equations. So chemical equations describe our chemical reactions. So here's an example. We have ethanol and oxygen reacting to form carbon dioxide and water. And we see the three in front of O and a two in front of CO2 and a three in front of water. And there's an implied one in front of the ethanol there. So what do these coefficients really mean? When our equation is balanced, it tells us that one mole of ethanol reacts with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of water. So these are ratios. These tell us number of moles. Now it's important to recognize that we can't use this for mass. This does not mean that one gram of ethanol reacts with three grams of oxygen. It means that one mole of ethanol reacts with three moles of oxygen. And we know that a mole contains always the same number of particles, but the mass of a mole depends on the chemical compound. And we look at our periodic table to determine the molar mass or the mass of one mole. But those coefficients tell us how many moles are reacting. So we can use those coefficients to write this thing called the mole ratio, which we've spent an entire day building. So our mole ratio is a conversion factor and just relates the number of moles of any two substances involved in a chemical equation. So why do we need the mole ratio? Well, we wanna be able to determine the number of moles of a product or a reactant in a reaction, given the moles of any other component of that reaction. And it's important to recognize that we can use the mole ratio whether the information we're given is about a reactant or a product, the mole ratio always works. So in order to find our mole ratios, we're gonna always balance our equation first and then use our balanced equation to determine mole ratios. And then we can use those to calculate the number of moles of product or reactant. So we've done that already. Now we're gonna build to the next step. And that's to use the information that we've already learned about converting from mass or volume of a reactant or product to moles. And then mole ratios to calculate from moles of one compound to moles of another compound, and then back to mass. So let's look at the steps of that activity. So that's what we're calling stoichiometry, is just going from mass of one thing to mass of another thing or volume. So our first step always is gonna to be to balance our equation. Use that to determine our mole ratios. We're gonna convert the mass or volume that we're given to moles as needed. If 
we're not already given moles. We're gonna use mole ratios to calculate the moles of the desired substance. And then we're gonna convert those moles to mass or volume if necessary. So that's a lot of steps that probably don't make a lot of sense yet. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and work through a problem. And then I think that will help um, to make this clear. So here's our first example problem. We have 6.50 grams of aluminum reacting with an excess of oxygen. And how many grams of aluminum oxide are formed? So let's switch um, screens here for just a second. Okay, so here's our problem. We have 6.50 grams of room, aluminum reacting with an excess of oxygen. So always our first step is going to be to write our balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to start by writing the skeleton equation. It tells me that aluminum reacts with oxygen. And because oxygen is diatomic, I'm going to write O2 to form aluminum oxide. Now, Aluminum oxide, I know that aluminum is a plus three, oxygen is a minus two. So I need two aluminums to go with three oxygens. And this is gonna be a solid because it's an ionic compound. Now, I have three oxygens on the product side and two on the reactant side. So I'm gonna put a three in front of the O2 to give me six oxygens. So I'm gonna put a two in front of the aluminum oxide. That gives me six oxygens on the right. Now I also have four aluminum. So I'm gonna come back over here and put a four in front of the aluminum. So we've completed step one, which was to balance our chemical equation. Let's identify our given and our unknown. So we are given 6.50 grams of aluminum and we're asked to find grams of aluminum oxide. So we know we always start with the given. So 6.50 grams of aluminum. Now I need to get to grams of aluminum oxide. I don't have a conversion factor that goes from grams of aluminum to grams of aluminum oxide, but I do have a conversion factor that goes from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide because I know the mole ratio of aluminum to aluminum oxide because it's right here in my balanced chemical equation. So if I know I can go from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide, I know that I need to get to moles of aluminum. And so I know that to go from moles, grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum, I have to use, um, molar mass. So I take a look at my periodic table. I see that the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams of aluminum per mole of aluminum. So now I can see that I've canceled out grams of aluminum and I have moles of aluminum. And I wanna to get to grams of aluminum oxide. So I still don't have a conversion factor that goes from moles of aluminum to grams of aluminum oxide. but I have this conversion factor that tells me for every four moles of aluminum, there are two moles of aluminum oxide. And so now I've canceled out moles of aluminum and I have moles of aluminum oxide. Now I just need to get to grams of aluminum oxide and we've been doing that. So I know again, that to get from moles to grams, I need to determine molar mass. So um, two times the mass of aluminum, which is 26.98, plus three times the mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. And that's gonna give me um, 106.96 grams. So 106, 0.96 grams of aluminum oxide. And the moles cancel out. 
And when I do all of that math, 6.5 times one times two times 106.96 divided by 26.98 times four, it gives me 12.3 grams of aluminum oxide. So that's our introduction to stoichiometry. Um, and we'll go over this in class. But as always, let me know if you have any questions and I look forward to seeing you in class.